Hi everyone, you're watching Alpha 7 Media, where you get the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And uh, just hear me out. What if the Apollo missions weren't what we thought it was, and it was more about going into caves and archaeology? Because I've been doing a little bit of research, and the connections are undeniable. And if you're still a NASA believer, I feel for you, because... The term NASA, which is an acronym, yes, I get that's an acronym for, you know, the Astro Service, whatever, aviation, whatever they try to make fit this word when this word is already been in use and it's a Hebrew word for deceive, to beguile, utterly forget you know they want you to utterly forget your creator and the truth and that um you know there's a reason why the sky is blue and i'll let you ponder that and try to figure that out because all i'm here for is to give you little breadcrumbs and to try to slowly wake people out of their comatose slumber that we've all been put in, you know, just think of the Wizard of Oz and the poppy fields. They want you to be all doped up and out of your mind and just, you know, think about life as a party, you know, that way you can just be damned and, you know, game over for you, okay? Because this life, this um, superficial reality is very temporary. Don't get it twisted when they're like, you only live once and blah, blah, blah. And um, try to make you think that there's no creator. Um, they're just trying to deceive you. Meanwhile, these people know exactly what it is. And they speak in code. Um, look up double speak, new speak. These are terms from the George Orwell novels, if you're not hip. But, yeah, so NASA has been playing games for a long, long time. This was a good one. Um, you know, how they get the curve. It's all about that fisheye lens, guys, for the photographers out there. A lot of really savvy people already figured them out because you could see how all their photos have been photoshopped and they even admit it too and edited and cgi and the metadata changed in all kind of ways so with their own words you know they tell you you know like how's that shadow being um cast um so they tell you and they show you in their emblems that's like a forked tongue on a snake and for those who deserve to be deceived let them be deceived you know there are a lot of people who do care about the truth and are willing to listen to the truth um because their soul is yearning for it you know they're looking for the living waters of real truth you know just like the movie a few good men everyone um claims they want the truth but they really want to lie because what they can't handle the truth you tell them and it's like their heads explode they already said people have been so brainwashed um there's a great video um on my dia dash channel my primary channel that's currently on a seven day strike uh, has a great um clip or you can just youtube uh yuri y u r i ben zomoff i believe or ben zomoff he was an ex kgb agent and pretty much said most people are just so compromised they can't handle the truth that they literally die and they are just too far gone they need to go so werner van brown for all of those nasa nuts that i see um why is this on their tombstone? So, again, these, um, uh, you know, nice deceivers, you know, your friends who you think are your friends. Meanwhile, you backstab and talk shit about the people who do show love and try to tell you the truth. Um, you know, they know the truth. They keep it to themselves. That's called a Freemasonic Oath of Silence. They're all about shutting the hell up and getting paid. That's what a sellout is. They sold out their morals, their soul, their integrity, all that shit. Their fellow neighbor, you know, um, they want you to think there's 
you know, nothing out there. It's a big void where the only void is between most people's ears. And when they talk about space, a lot of times they're on a lot of psychedelics, guys, you know. And space is, um, you know, they're funny when they talk about that. It can mean various things. So there's a few good points, you know, I'm just showing you. Stanley Kubrick was all about giving you the signs in the movie The Shining. If you didn't know, that was all coded, but, you know, for all the so-called movie buffs, they're like, yeah, I'm really so hip to all the movies. Are you really? Because it was all about that on Danny's sweater with, um, you know, the rocket, the so-called Apollo mission. And if you didn't know, um, they're all about <clears throat> numerology in the Bible. And they are about the Bible. They'll just defy it in public, you know. Um, it's about Revelation 9, 11. Chapter 9, verse 11. Why do you think they have you call 911 for emergency? Why do you think that whole 911 thing happened as a Masonic ritual? Um, so yeah, it's all crazy. Yeah, people pointed out this is in the shape of Pluto. Remember Pluto from Disney, the doggy? That's him right there. There's been so many pictures already because like they have strings that were attached to them and stuff. Um, so a lot of savvy people already put it out. I'm just putting this out there for those who think, oh, you know, this can't be, you know, um, yeah, there's many ways they can give that illusion to you. They are the same people who produce movies like The Shining. And um, they, use, you know, they are very good at giving you a false representation. I mean, look how far filters have come. And this is for the poor people. Um, okay, well, you don't think the rich people are like ahead of you? so many generations. I hear they had cell phones in the 1800s. Yeah, the elite, that's how they control the masses. You think they want you on the same par as them? I mean, isn't that a little bold of us? Isn't that a bit arrogant to think that way? I mean, I know Americans are full of shit and full of freaking confidence. I mean, I don't understand. I mean, there's got to be a line with common sense. I mean, how delusional can you be? You know, we're not children anymore. You're supposed to look back with your brain, your adult brain, and say, hey, things don't add up here. Maybe I need to go back and compare the bullshit, you know? Like, does this little tin can think it's going anywhere? But they give you these pictures, and to this day, you got grown fools who are really just God haters. Like, let's just face it. Most people who buy into this, they hate God. Even if they are fake spiritual people, to believe in this madness, where would the creator reside if it's just black nothingness? That is the most depressing thing I would ever imagine if there was just nothing out there, right, guys? Just complete... Um, it's suffocation, no oxygen, and people think, oh, I'm going to colonize, I'm going to do this, like, um, totally in the spirit of invaders, the people who think like that are the same, have the same bloodline or mentality as the colonizers of this land from the Israelites, the Aboriginal, I mean, seriously, I mean, stay in your effing lane, you are not what you think you are. You've been lied to to think that you're godlike and you could just dominate all of creation when you had no hands in putting it together. So my point in all this is that I think this has to do, because I came across this Apollo 11 cave mission. So it was really interesting because if you notice too, um, it says the Apollo 11 cave is an archaeological site says in the Il Karaz region of south western Na Nam Ibia, Na Namibia, approximately 160 miles southwest of Kitman Shoop, the name given to the surrounding area and presumably the cave by the Nama people was 
Cochanas, Gochanas. However, the cave was given its name by German archaeologist Wolfgang Eric Went in reference to Apollo 11's then recent return to Earth. That's a little odd. You can say, oh, he was a fan. He was this. He was that. I don't care. That's odd. So it goes to show that's like a metaphor probably for these are the real mi missions because they're all about, just like with the Indiana Jones, gotten the earth, looking at all the features they can find. And um, there are like interesting pieces here. So it's definitely a rabbit hole I like to go explore. But what is that? Like a tiger or something, right? Like a cat-like type of animal. And what was big there is the quartzite slabs, which I found very interesting. So yeah, um, they made a point to give it the name. Like, why did they even have to mention the Apollo 11 at all? Like, at all. Like, it's kind of like a telepathic nod. Like, they're really funny. And it says, the cave contains some of the oldest pieces of mobile arts ever discovered in Southern Africa associated with charcoal that was radiocarbon dated. Well, of course, they say that radiocarbon dating can only go back 6,000 years, guys. So whatever, isn't creation only like 6,000 years? But okay, we'll just go with that. The art slabs found in this cave are referenced to as the Apollo 11 stones. In total, seven gray-brown quartzite slabs were excavated from the cave. Besides the slabs, the cave contains several white and red paintings. The subject of paintings ranged from simple geometric patterns to bees, which are still a nuisance to the unwary travelers. So guys, check that out, right? I found that so interesting. Um, quartzite is very interesting too. They used it for tools, for um, different various tools. And I'm definitely gonna go down this road. I was looking at I was looking at the Nama people of that region. I found this funny too. These lighter skin people, but when I try to open it, it doesn't want me to look. It was acting stupid. It was calling Kalash Valley Nama. Cause these look like Arab or so called white people, right? So they're like all mixed various people, which I learned in Africa it was like a melting pot. So I don't know, and like the, it's trying to, I can't really find the origin of this word. It keeps saying lizard, large lizard, crocodile, or as a name, sexually active, irresistible, fiery. I don't know, I really can't get the, the name right. There's um, a luxury lodge by this name, but go chanas, go, like almost like chan or cham, which is interesting. Because I'm learning a lot about history in the light of, line of ham and so-called um, white people are um, from the line of ham or Canaanites. Um, interesting. Um, so I don't know. There's more that I need to look into this. But this quartzite, I um, guess it's a big deal. has a grainy, glassy, sandpaper-like pa surface. That's what it looks like, guys. Quartzite. And I learned from um, Logic Before Authorities channel that the quartz are really resin from large trees that were from yesteryear, if you can imagine. You know, just think about um, the movie Avatar, you know? You got the corporation, the U.S. corporation gutting down all these trees. I mean, what do you think all these missions really are? You don't think that they're using taxpayers' dollars to go and, like, desecrate a lot of these places and then hide history from you of course they do guys so i was just like looking up um apollo 11 cave discoveries apollo 11 cave stones that's you know i haven't heard of that before is one of the oldest sites of prehistoric art in africa situated in the huns mountains of southwestern nam Ibia, which is interesting, the Huns, I was learning about that too. It was named after the Apollo 11 spaceship in July 1969 by the German archaeologist Wolfgang Wendt, who led 
the team of scientists and researchers that excavated the cave. The cave is famous for containing some of the oldest mobilitary or mobilary, I'm sorry, are ever found on the African continent, namely seven small stone slabs decorated with charcoal and ochre images of animals. The presence of charcoal in the sediment surrounding the painting stones was carbon dated to 25,000 BCE, making them the earliest art in Africa after the Blombos cave engravings and the Delp Luf eggshell engravings to see how the stone Age engravings in the Apollo 11 cave fits into the development of cave art elsewhere. See prehistoric art timeline. So look at that, guys. You can check out the Blombos cave engravings. That's even older, huh, guys? Well, I'll put this link for you guys just because it's like, hey, maybe it is that mission. We don't know, you know? I think so. Because um, on, they get this source, um, it says quartzite has been used since prehistoric times for stone tools. It is presently used for decorative dimension stone as crushed stone in highway construction and as a source of silica. See guys, they're still using this shit. All these missions they've got on the earth for their freaking profit, right? Of silicon. Ooh, is that what they use in freaking implants? Oh guys, you gotta watch it. You got freaking rocks in your body and silicon compounds okay there so that is quite um the mineral there and also there's occurrences in the washout range in utah near salt lake city so there are sources of that in america too guys all over as you can see near salt lake and as resistant ridges in the appalachian so on the east side so yeah, very, very interesting. Um, just guys need to look that up because all these Apollo cave, I mean, come on now. And the guy's telling you he's naming it after the damn mission. <laughs> and, it's a, and if you still believe in the ball earth, you're really just a worship of Baal, ball, Baal. It's all trick bag to you. It's all like a religion which the United States of America Constitution forbids an establishment of religion, but here we go with the state-mandated propaganda. What are you going to do? All you're going to do is fight back. Okay, that's why my channel's called Alpha 7 Media, because we are fighting back. Seven is a holy number in the Bible. Seven is a recurrent theme. Um, and um, I'm here fighting back the truth. We fight against the deception on my initial channel. I'm called Daya Dash because I dash deception as much as I can. And this Apollo mission stuff, I mean, there is just so much information on this that it's actually laughable. It's really, really a laughable. Uh, heliocentrism is a belief system in itself. Okay, it's the foundation stones of atheism. We understand that. Your eyes tell you that the horizon is completely straight. You couldn't even make skyscrapers or half of the stuff. If you don't know about the Befford level experiment, it was a series of observation, observations carried out along a six-mile length of the old Befford River on the Befford level, Norfolk, England. The experiment was often performed during the 19th and early 20th centuries, most results have served to prove flat earth theory, and although a few have observed, have claimed otherwise, they have been soundly disproved by flat earthers. The Befford level experiment remains one of the most widely accepted examples of flat earth proof. Okay, all I know is that I know you can dig in the earth, I know that there's things in the earth, but we're talking about the surface layer. We're on a plane. That's why you got air planes, not air planets. We're on. We're in a realm. Okay, the, this Earth is a realm between heaven and hell, or Sheol, if you can imagine that. Um, most people can't because people actually hate their creator, um, and it's really, really um, sadistic when you think about it because they look for excuses all the time. When at a certain point, you got to be like, okay, enough's enough, you know. And um, this was a very powerful quote, and um, for all the scientism people who think they're so scientific, which science just means knowledge, you can have misinformation. 
It says, what did the first man to reach the stratosphere have to say about the Earth's shape? That's from Dr. Auguste Picard, if anybody cares, from 1931. He said, it seemed like it was a flat disc with an upturned edge. Now you know where they got the inspiration from the Frisbee. All in your face. Isn't there a Heineken commercial that kind of depicts this and he goes up and it's like splashes in the waters above, you know, the firmament, the most high separated, the waters above from the waters below, hence why the sky is blue. Ah, but no, they're going to tell you, no, it's atmosphere. No, it's this. you never been. You cannot cross the Van Allen belts without getting torched the hell up, they say. But in the tin cans they use, apparently you can, right? See, why would they lie, you know? I don't know. Hide free energy. Hide the creator. Hide your spirituality. Hide more land. There's land all over the place that they hide, right? They may give you fake maps and all that shit. Hide that you're the center of the universe and that you're special. Yeah, we are special because um, the Bible tells you that the most high cares about his creation. The solar system, they want you to think that he's a distant entity, you know, and suns have the same term as S-O-N, S-U-N, get it? The angels are also the creator's sons. Huh, huh, don't get the joke. Whew, pretty sad. Luring people away from God for 500 years. Yep, the heliocentric model with its spinning ball theory. Earth is the foundation for the godless Big Bang Theory, evolution, and atheism. Yep, and there's actually a Flat Earther Illuminati card game card, which is funny because this was um, unleashed in 1995 with all the stuff that's going on now, so they pretty much knew what was going on, right? And what does it say? People laugh, but the Flat Earth is no something. <laughs> Thank you. For their action, you may roll two dice. If your roll is equal to or less than the number of places you control, the flat earth's weird alternate geology <clears throat> has led them to a gold strike, and you may draw as many plot cards as the number you rolled. See how they plot against the righteous and against the people who speak the real truth? Hmm. You say it's not a real game. It's all a Freemasonic chessboard game. It's wherever we go. It's like black, white, white, black. You got to be in a sorority or a fraternity. Yeah, okay, to get anywhere. You think that they're not all part of the same brotherhood? There's just so much about it. They've been lying about everything. I couldn't even show you enough information. I mean, I could be here all day. This is just a precursory thing. You know, um, there's just so much. It's like, what did George Bernard Shaw say? It says right here, We are more gullible and superstitious today than we were in the Middle Ages. And an example of modern credulity is the widespread belief that the earth is round. <laughs> The average man can advance not a single reason for thinking that the earth is round. He merely swallows exactly this theory because there is something about it that appears to the 20th century mentality. George Bernard Shaw. There's just so much because you know what? That's why they don't want people going to Antarctica. They keep, like, you know, keeping people away from them. You need, like, a special permit. Look at the Game of Thrones show from HBO. The intro just shows you how the Earth is, like, a wheel within a wheel. It's, like, more of a flat type of wheel. Like, you know, a plate can be round, but it's, you know, it's so interesting, you know. So we're definitely in a realm. And, yeah, you can dig into the Earth and whatever. I understand that, but they say there's so much that's not been explored. And so I think that's why a lot of these explorations are about, yes, I heard of the hollow earth theory. There's so many, but we're talking about the base, the top. I mean, these people literally, literally believe we're on a beach ball. Like, that couldn't even be right. Like, I was at the beach the other day, and I'm, like, looking at, um, you know, boats and stuff, or, like, you know, sailing boats. I'm, like, these things would totally, like, freaking topple over. And they already showed with, like, all the math and stuff, you know, and with the ancient cosmology, you really got to go back to the ancient maps. 
the ancient maps tell you so much of what the ancients knew. People are really disrespecting their ancestors when they think that this generation is so much more wise than the next generation. That's not true. We become dumbed down. And if uh, you haven't watched the alien movies out there or Prometheus or all that junk, it shows you that a lot of these beings were very... um. They, depend, they were very dependent, like what would happen with the deacon or whatever story I've been watching, Prometheus, that they became dependent on technology and became, you know, um, less intelligent. And basically, it was dumbing them down. Just like today, we rely on calculators and it messes up our, you know, basic computing functions. And, you know, just uh, in the 90s, um, we could remember people's phone numbers without having to store everything the way we do now. So, no, the ancients knew a thing or two about what was going on. And even one of Van Brown, the so-called founding fathers of NASA, has a Bible verse of Psalms, okay, talking about the firmament on his tombstone and there's a lot of YouTube videos guys with people with GoPro cameras that it'll, it'll say um, just type in YouTube GoPro um, hit in the firmament and it'll go up so high right and then it'll hit something and then the darn rocket will come right back down okay so this is this cosmology. A lot of people say the circles are the torrent fields around um, because we are an electromagnetic um, plane. Um, that's what they call gravity, which is, there is no gravity. That's just another false god. Um, and obviously, you know, the throne of God is up there. There are many layers to heaven. If you read in the book of Enoch, like each layer or each realm, they have to travel like quite a ways. It's like, maybe that's what they mean about the light years. Like it does take time, but you need to be attached to an angel because we couldn't survive those conditions by ourselves. And it's not how they tell you with the stupid NASA bullshit. When they're talking about NASA missions, most of it, you know, when they're talking about space, a lot of them, if you haven't known, um, they've done experiments with the military. They use people as guinea pigs. And when you think about somebody being spaced out, you know, um, just think about that. It could be like a mental type of thing. They went somewhere. They were transported somewhere. Because I've seen movies alert alluding to that. They were calling actual pills, moons and Mars and stuff. So I was like, okay there. But then you go to, um, you know, things like this, the Apollo cave, you got these stone slabs from, you know, so it's making me really want to look into it because Southern Africa, um, there's just so much that goes into it. And they do say a lot of history is there, especially also with, um, you know, uh, us people that are considered so-called white or whatever, or white Portuguese, we're really so-called African. And then when you go back and you start, you know, trying to make connections, um, you start to see like, hey, you know, the language starts to connect and things like that. But um, this is the period, and they said it was in Chad, Africa, which is funny, because like how many white boys do you know named Chad? <laughs> <laughs> now realizing that hey chad is in africa guys you know so like let's not be so colorblind with stuff but look at this lady uh you know there's a lot of crazy pictures you could see definitely but i think these apollo missions are more code guys it's just straight code what was that other one i had for you i don't want to lose it um the one with the uh I'll find it again. They had the Apollo caves, stones. Yeah, this one. Because um, it says right here, the one, I couldn't find it. It says beautiful ladies, large scale engraved and painted images of female figures. I wanted to see what they look like, but I'll maybe do another video on that. And the uh, Anetti Plateau in Chad, Africa. So a lot of stuff like the Elon's Bay Cave. So they got all these different caves, guys, you know. And it's just funny. Why would they call it Apollo 11? And it's located at the juncture of the orange 
and great fish. Anybody interested? I don't know if they'll let you anywhere near it, right? Uh, um, it's at the juncture of the orange and great fish rivers in their sparsely populated Karaz region of Namibia, roughly 250 kilometers, which is 160 miles southwest of the regional capital, Kitmanshup. In the language of the local Nama or Hottentot people, the district is known as Go Chanas. That's very interesting, guys. Apollo Cave, guys. So I think I made it a connection. You think what you will. If you think I'm weird, whatever, whatever. Well, I think you're weird because you just believe whatever on TV. Did you even cross-reference anything with anything else? But this guy here, he, he said it to himself that it had some type of connection. And they love to kind of give you little truth bombs here and there. Because they know people are so dumbed down, they won't even get it in the first place. But he actually went out of his way to make a reference to that. So are these Apollo missions all about going in the caves, gut in the earth, trying to hide history from us and rewriting history? Uh, you decide, but definitely something to look into. A lot of caves, look, there's many caves here. Four to, there's 41 you can go into, oh, 124 known caves. Definitely a great road to travel. I'll um, maybe spend some time looking into this topic and uh, check out the Apollo 11 stone. It says it right here from the Khan Academy. Very, very, very fascinating. All right, guys, have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.